Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Line of Gods Daily Dire series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dire video, I want to go ahead and read you a chapter from the Bible. Today I will be continuing the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which had made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both good and bad, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him out, cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him, and went their way. The same day came him to the Sadducees, which asked, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, which when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh, and last of all the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions.
Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Probably the most powerful verse, not most powerful, but one of the most analyzed verses in the uh, in the New Testament is on the idea of marriage and the resurrection and actually the lack thereof of marriage. So I want to go ahead and just offer offer an analysis of this, which is this. In the beginning, so when we look at the scriptures, the in the in the Old Testament, the idea is if a man died with a wife and he did not have seed, his brother would take would marry that wife, go into her have a son and the son would be the son of the man who died or the daughter would be of the man who died does that make sense he would raise up seed to his brother that's what they would do to you. that was what the scripture said that is not the case in the time of the new testament regardless of that jesus the pharisees and the Jews ask him they say if seven men marry a woman whose is she in the resurrection so the question immediately has a possessive nature to it whose woman like who what man is able to hold and keep this woman now i'm not going to necessarily say this but there's there could also be a covetous implication of it right which of these men gets to covet this woman whether or not they all covet her which of them holds her so now the idea is jesus says ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of god in heaven so the idea being now, let me offer the analysis I have, which is not something that is not unheard of before, but nevertheless what I thought of. In the beginning, before Eve and Adam ate from the tree, they were together in the Garden of Eden. God made Adam, he breathed into the dust of the earth and made man in his image. From the dust, God made man. Then, out of the rib of man, God made woman. For out of man came woman, her, so she is called woman. They are sitting there in the Garden of Eden naked, but they don't know they're naked. They don't know what, um, you know, copulation is. They don't know what um, insemination is. They don't know what, uh, you know, being, you know, one with another physically is yet. And um, they don't know what sexual intercourse is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, the word I was thinking of was intercourse. And I actually want to make sure I've used the word copulation correctly because I'm pretty sure copulation is the act of... Yeah, copulation literally means sexual intercourse. So that's the idea. They don't know copulation. They don't know intercourse. They're sitting there naked, male and female. They still have never become one flesh. Why are they not doing anything? Because they don't need to do anything. Because they feel a fullness that comes from God. Just wait for a second there. Why does the Spirit of God wait 4,000 years to have a child? Is it just because of the strife and tribulation? Now, there was plenty of strife and tribulation. Not just because. Because the Spirit doesn't feel this feeling that Adam and Eve have. Where when they sin, God says, In your sorrow you will die, and you will bring forth children. The Spirit, I feel a purpose which is to serve God do I have a son yes I do Lord Jesus Christ do I intend to have more children I write how I will have more children by way of in vitro fertilization and surrogacy my first son my second son will be named Prince Christian White so I am driven in this way it's the idea that the, the Pharisees and Sadducees ask in this way but in the beginning in the Garden of Eden Man and woman did not know copulation. They did not know intercourse. They felt a fullness from God that led them to not need to die and to breed because they're going to die, right? Why do they breed? Because they're going to die. But in the beginning, they weren't going to die because God was helping them live. In the resurrection, it's the same way. It's not that the man and wife didn't marry in their earthly life and in heaven they knew they were married in the earth. They know that they were married in the resurrection. It's that they don't need to breed now because they're not going to die. They don't need to think about the things of this earth because they're not going to die anymore. They're going to have a different life and feel a fullness from God. Now, whether or not man and woman, like, like whether or not, for example, people breed by way of IVF surrogacy, I don't know. 
So I intend to rewrite my gospel at some point because I was quite uh, green in terms of my biblical understanding. So I don't know, think that they, people can reproduce in New Heaven, in the, in the in New Jerusalem. So I intend to rewrite my gospel at some point. It's not of pressing importance to me because they're only like technically incorrect things. That's why I, I always reiterate and say the Christian Bible is perfect. There's no addition here that is required to go to heaven. I'm writing it for my own people. I write, I want to sire my sons forever, but I also look at it and I acknowledge that I think that in, in New Jerusalem that you cannot even do IVF surrogacy. I don't think that's allowed. Because the idea is man now lives forever with the fullness of God. They no longer die and therefore no longer need to breed to, 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 to not die, right? To not die out. So that's the idea, is that that is what Jesus Christ is saying. He's saying that they will be empowered and feel full from God and they no longer need to breed because they're no longer going to die just as it was before original sin. And so that is such a beautiful analysis of a beautiful verse. And actually, this is also worth mentioning. I did mention I do intend to rewrite my gospel. I was thinking of different structures. Like, for example, I was thinking about because the gospel is a story. So I was going to have like the story, like, for example, chapter 13 about me getting my first job. A mango tree cannot give gooseberries. Actually, I think that's chapter 14. Either way, that, the point being that those are gospel chapters. That's a, a part of my life. But then there are also parables, like the parable of the leaky roof, the rival kings, the twin shepherds. Those are parables. Those are teachings. And then there's also naranjalical wisdom, like every naranjalical votes is pro-life and supports trickle-down economics. So those are three different, like those are three different ideas. And so I was thinking I would rewrite my gospel to incorporate the fact that I am no longer as biblically green as I once was. I'm completing a second and in-depth reading. So I mentioned that here just for the sake of historical perspective. I talk about how my gospel has no merits on anybody going to heaven. It's just a guide for my children, for my people. The Christian Bible is the way to heaven. Lord Jesus Christ is the way to heaven, I should specify. And, um, you know, there's no addendum to that here. That is, like, people don't need to follow what I'm saying to go to heaven. And um, that idea being that I do intend to rewrite my gospel at some point to incorporate everything I just said. So that's where I'll go ahead and end the Bible reading there for today. And transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dive video. Since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I worked my software developer job. I trained MMA. I created it and I've created this Daily Dive video for 72524. And with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.